Equifax, the company whose name sounds like a theatrical production in which Daniel Radcliffe plays a horse that fucks a fax machine. <laughs> now, Equifax is one of the big three credit reporting agencies, the companies who keep financial data on all of us so that people like uh, lenders and landlords can decide whether or not we are trustworthy. So Equifax controls some of our most sensitive information, and about a month ago, we learned this. Breaking news from the credit monitoring company Equifax. Cyber thieves making off with private information of 143 million Americans, nearly half the U.S. population. It's actually worse. It's now 145 million Americans, and I've got good news and bad news there. The good news is that by private information, they don't mean your Google search history. So <laughs> nobody yet knows about the time you searched for Wario porn, parentheses, real, <laughs> or world's richest dogs looking for assistance, <laughs> or can loneliness cause the farts. <laughs> but the bad news is the information they got could well be all this. It's your name, social security number, birth date, driver's license, and addresses where you lived. Information that is mostly permanent unless you're in federal witness protection. Wow. OK, so that does sound bad, but here is a simple solution. Just move 145 million people into the witness protection program. <laughs> that means, Joneses, uh, you are the Thompsons. Uh, Thompsons, you're the Campbells. Uh, Campbells, you're the Mendozas. Mendozas, you're the Joneses. Wait, wait, hold on. Joneses, you shouldn't be there. I made you the Thompsons. No, Thompsons, I, I made you the Campbells. Campbells, you're the Mendozas. Mendozas, why are you there? You should be living in the Joneses' house in Phoenix. Oh, no, I shouldn't have said Phoenix. Oh, God, the Joneses are dead! <laughs> the Joneses are dead! Forget the whole plan, I was just trying to help! I'm sorry for trying! Oh, they're dead! <laughs> and, and I know... I know there might be some younger people watching this saying, well, hold on, who cares? We're the first generation to routinely send pictures of our junk to each other over the internet. <laughs> Why should we give a shit about someone seeing our social security numbers? But you should know, criminals can do a lot more with that number than they can with a picture of your dick. This information is going to be sold left and right on the black market. People are going to be able to open up credit cards for the rest of your life once they have that information. They can go out and purchase a home in your name. They can open bank accounts, take car loans. Someone who has your social security number could actually take a job, they could file taxes, and even claim your kids as dependents and be gone with your refund before you ever actually file a tax return. No, 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 the tax benefit is the whole point of having children. Without that, all you're left with is your actual children. <laughs> which, you know, ugh. <laughs> the point here is, it's a huge problem. And in any other era, this would have been the biggest news story for a month. But, but now that every day's headline is simply the words, everything batshit bananas again today, <laughs> it slipped under the radar. But it is worth asking, how the hell did this happen? Because the short answer is, the people in charge have done literally everything wrong. And let's start with just, just the way that Equifax told us about the hack. In early September, their then-CEO, Rick Smith, a man with a face and name so bland he may as well be called Human Person or <laughs> Frasier Rerun, he issued a taped apology, but his remorse seemed a little less than heartfelt. On July 29th of this year, we discovered that attackers had gained unauthorized access to certain Equifax data files. This is clearly a disappointing event and one that strikes at the heart of who we are and what we do. Holy shit! <laughs> Rick Smith is so alarmingly mechanical, you probably have to put him in rice every time he gets wet. <laughs> now, notably, he mentioned there that Equifax learned about the breach on July 29th. But even more notably, that video was uploaded in September, which is, and this is true, after July. <laughs> so Equifax knew about the breach for nearly six weeks before telling the public. And they claimed that they needed that time because the investigation was complex and time-consuming. Although, that's not all that happened in that time span. Three Equifax executives sold nearly $2 million in company stock days after the data breach was discovered. Wow! Selling stock before the public knows there's a problem is one of those things that looks suspicious whether or not you're actually doing something wrong. It's like walking into a petting zoo with a bib on. <laughs> what exactly are you planning on messily devouring in there? <laughs> and Equifax defended that, saying none of the executives in question, including their chief financial officer, knew about the data breach, which raises another question. How is that even possible? <laughs> Did they just ignore emails with the subject lines, breach, following up on breach? Where the fuck are you? Breach, breach, breach! 
and just spoke to you in person about breach and you just stared blankly at me and then said, I'm gonna order from that salad place. <laughs> and, and if you are getting frustrated already with this kind of incompetence, you're gonna need to pace yourself because this story gets a lot worse. Apparently, there were multiple points where this hack could have been prevented, and one of them is incredible, because Equifax were alerted by Homeland Security back in March that they needed to fix a critical vulnerability in their software. But as lawmakers discovered at a recent hearing, that's not what happened. There was one person, apparently, who forgot to tell somebody that they had a piece of software that needed to be patched. Yeah, it is not ideal that a company guarding such valuable information leaves something that important down to one person. It's like finding out that Chase Bank has a big red button labelled, lose everyone's money, <laughs> and the only thing stopping anyone from pushing it is Frank. And look, I love Frank. I love the guy, but what if he has to pee? And I want to tell you that this is an anomaly, but Equifax has had multiple headline-grabbing breaches over the years, and that is not even counting smaller incidents like this. I checked my credit report the other day online with Equifax. That was it. And next thing I know, I have 300 pieces of mail sitting in my mailbox. Every single one of these is addressed to her, but they're not hers. Instead, she got other people's credit reports. Now, names, social security numbers, dates of birth, current and previous addresses, bank and loan account numbers, all stacked up on a kitchen table in Biddeford. Yeah, I mean, that's not great, is it? And it really should have set off red flags at Equifax when hundreds of different credit reports were being mailed to the same address. What exactly did you think had happened there, that every single Fraggle checked their credit at once <laughs> down at Fraggle Rock? <laughs> down at Fraggle Rock. <laughs> now, very nice. And, <laughs> and, and I know that other companies have had breaches, but none remotely as damaging as this new Equifax one. Because remember, this isn't Target exposing customers' credit cards. This is compromising social security numbers, the things that thieves could use to open new credit cards in your name. And if your information was stolen, which, remember, is about a 50-50 chance, it could haunt you forever. You don't change your birth date. You don't change your social security number. Those who have been uh, jeopardized by this hack will have to protect themselves for years until they're dead. It's true, and just think about that. There is only one other thing that you have to constantly protect yourself from until you're dead, and that's fucking death. <laughs> and you would hope that Equifax would do a decent job of mitigating the damage. After all, they did have nearly six weeks to work on a response, but instead, their fuck-ups continued. For instance, they created a website for concerned consumers to go to, but then this happened. The site that Equifax started is called Equifax Security 2017, but a developer named Nick Sweeting wanted to show how easy it is to create a similar fake site, so he did. He called it Security Equifax 2017. Exactly. Someone created a fake site, and if you're thinking, well, who would be dumb enough to fall for that? Equifax! That's who, because they tweeted links to that fake site at least eight times. <laughs> despite the fact that site had a couple of tiny clues that it might be fake, from the headline reading, why did Equifax use a domain that's so easily impersonated by phishing sites, to the fact that when you clicked on their frequently asked questions, this happened. Well played, pranksters. You have my respect. <laughs> but look, don't worry. Equifax says that they are tightening up their operation. And to see how well that they've done on that, you, you can just go to equifaxfraudprevention.com, not because it's their site, but because it's our site. <laughs> we bought it two days ago, and if you go there, you'll find the message, how are we still able to do this? Why haven't you learned anything? <laughs> but wait, wait, because there is even more. Because Equifax also offered consumers a year of free credit monitoring, but when people tried to sign up for the service, they noticed something. Guess what? You lock into Equifax terms of service when you sign up for it, oh. which means that you can't sue the company. You've got to resolve any disputes in forced arbitration. Exactly. You'd be giving up your right to sue. So, legally, your best recourse at that point would be shaking your fist at the heavens while shouting, Equifax! <laughs> Now, they, they've since rescinded that clause, although many frustrated people are now signing up for third-party credit monitoring services like LifeLock, who've been advertising everywhere. And they have seen a real surge in business in the wake of this breach. Although, if you are considering LifeLock because you are mad at Equifax, 
there is something you're going to need to know. According to filings with the SEC, LifeLock purchases credit monitoring services from Equifax. And that means someone buys credit monitoring through LifeLock. LifeLock turns around and passes some of that revenue directly along to Equifax. Is that right, Mr. Smith? That is correct. <laughs> it's true. Some of, some of the money that you pay to LifeLock goes right back to fucking Equifax, which could only be more infuriating if you then found out that the rest of it goes to Toys for Todds, a charity that purchases sex toys for grown men named Todd. <laughs> Buy your own sex toys, Todd. We can't carry you on this one. And look, Equifax connections aside, LifeLock has had repeated issues itself, including settlements with the FTC and a truly disastrous ad campaign a few years back. I'm Todd Davis, and I'm here to prove just how safe your identity can be with LifeLock. That's my real social security number. Yep. LifeLock's then CEO, Todd Davis, actually put his real social security number, 457-55-5462, on a truck and billboards. For a time, it was impossible to escape his social security number, 457-55-5462. And that was a very cocky move, and one that resulted in him having his identity stolen 13 times. <laughs> and I'm guessing that the defence for the people who took it was, I didn't steal his identity, I literally got, got it off the back of a truck. <laughs> so, to put it mildly, LifeLock may not be your best solution to the Equifax crisis, which brings us to the question, what is? Well, consumer advocates told us that the one big step everyone should take is to go to all three large credit reporting companies, that's Equifax, Experian and TransUnion, and freeze your credit. That way, no one can access it, including you, until you unfreeze it. Now, the companies also offer their own credit protection products with names like Trusted ID or Credit Lock Plus. But they are often more expensive and offer fewer consumer protections. So if you need a way to remember this, locks are something you don't want. Think of Justin Bieber's dreadlocks. <laughs> a terrible decision to be avoided. Whereas freezes are great. Uh, think of this tiny penguin losing its frozen mind. <laughs> See? So to recap, locks, oof, freezes, <laughs> now, now, here is the thing. Here's the thing on this. Freezing and unfreezing your credit can cost money, which will go back to these companies, because seemingly they just can't fucking lose on this. And if you need any more proof of that, on the very same day the Congress was yelling at Equifax's former CEO, it emerged that the company had just been awarded a $7 million contract by the IRS to prevent fraud, which led one senator to make a pretty brutal comparison. You realize to many Americans right now that looks like uh, we're giving Lindsay Lohan the keys to the mini bar. <laughs> I understand your point. That was the pause of a man thinking, do I let that pass? <laughs> do I correct him on how to pronounce Lohan? <laughs> or do I double down and pronounce her name Lingonberry Lahoney Baloney? <laughs> And you should know, you should know, that IRS deal has been suspended. Not cancelled, by the way, just suspended, and that might make you angry. But the problem is that anger won't have much impact on Equifax, because they make most of their money selling our data to businesses, like banks. So, in their eyes, we are not the consumer, we're the product. To think of it in terms of KFC, we are not the guy buying the ten-piece buckets, we're the fucking chickens. <laughs> So, for the time being, businesses are the only ones who can exert influence here. And as one colourfully dressed expert pointed out, that's not going to happen anytime soon. I haven't heard any big company came out, come out yet and say, we're not going to use Equifax anymore for their credit scores. Point. So far, yeah. everybody's been quiet, and I don't know what they're waiting to hear. This is outrageous. They should be done. But I bet you, because it's America, they'll be OK. Here's the truth. That angry business casual farm animal on Fox <laughs> Business is talking sense. And that sentence alone shows just how bad things are. So, in the long term, there should clearly be major reform to this industry and how it's regulated. But that is going to take time. So, until then, you need to freeze your credit reports with all three of these companies and only unfreeze them when you need to apply for credit. And because the freeze option can be hard to find on their sites, if you go to our Twitter feed, we will give you the exact links to do that. And when you do, they will give you a PIN number that you need to unfreeze it. So do not lose that number, or at the very least, make it something memorable. I don't know, like 
457 555462. But not that, because of course, that's Todd Davis's social security number. <laughs>